Fictional Characters Collide Rules Number 1. Outside help is not allowed unless it benefits both characters. Number 2. If there is multiple cannons of a character, we will choose the ones that will give the fairest matchup. Number 3. The field or animation does not depict how the fight would go, it is merely for entertainment. Number 4. Non-cannon is not allowed for either character. Unless, however, we are using a specific non-canon form of a character. We hope you enjoy the episode. Ah, uh, Greek mythology. One of my favorite topics to study. Wait, you actually study? I mean, like, study things that aren't torture? Color me impressed. Well, yeah. Gotta keep you on your toes, buddy. Wait a minute. The first isn't a color. Uh... But back on topic. Greek mythology gets pretty fucked up. Like, really fucked up when you really look at Zeus. Well, luckily, today's fighters take Greek mythology and go down a lighter route. You could say that it's a bit of a shocker. Damn it, Archer! Shut up, that was funny. Anyway, Hercules, Disney's own son of Zeus. And Billy Batson, the normal kid turned superhero, Captain Mar- uh, I mean Shazam. He's Demon and I'm Archer. And it's our job to add like both these characters to their fullest to see what happened when these two fictional characters collide. High up on the mountains of Olympus, a celebration was held. Zeus's new son was born, and all were there to grant gifts to the child. All except for the best character in the movie, Hades, who at the time was planning on taking over Olympus with the power of Titans. But thanks to a vision from the Sisters of Fate, he discovered that the newborn child would be the one to stop his plans. To prevent this from happening, he sent his goons to not kill the baby, but to feed him an elixir that would take away his godly powers. The problem was that he had to make sure he drank every last drop, and they missed just one. Good job, stupid. But since he lost most of his godly powers, he was brought to the mortals and raised by farmers for most of his young life. Oh, and then he found out he was a god. As you do. So after talking to Daddy Zeus and being trained by Danny DeVito... Demon, that's... That's not actually Danny DeVito, that's... That's Phil. The... The satyr. What you mean? He sounds just like him! He has a small and hairy body, he eats the trash too! He's the trash man, Archer! He just grabs all the trash, and he eats it all up! That's Danny DeVito! Y you would have expected that after nearly two years, I'd get used to this. Sometimes I wonder what my own arrows would taste like. Anyway, this sparked his journey. His journey to become someone in the same league as the rest of his family. And he didn't go empty-handed. For one, he has his mighty sword to shoot arrows and cast exploding pineapple shells. N no, I'm kidding. It's a sword, what do you think it does? Well, with it he can bend it and throw it like a boomerang, and he can even shoot lightning out of it as well in the video game. Oh yeah, right. But that's not all, he's an amazing fighter in close quarters combat as well. The guy really loves to punch stuff. Yeah, that's kind of it. Wait, how could I forget? He also has his Pegasus, which he has had since his birth. It's a Pegasus so it can fly, and that's, again, kind of it. Huh, alright. Let's get to the feats. For one, Hercules is insanely powerful, even in the early parts of the movie. With this single hit, he caused this giant avalanche that crushed the Hydra, and he was able to plug up a volcano with a regular boulder, which, if we're being technical, is as much of a feat for the boulder as it is for the guy himself. Well, what's my soul? Earth is on a roll. He also beat up Hades, who caused this explosion as well, and even destroyed an entire forest. That's nothing compared to his greatest feat, where he scooped up four titans together, threw them into the air, and caused them to explode into a solar system. Yeah, he did that. And with speed, it's kinda hard. He has demonstrated the capacity to run at superhuman speeds, and that's, again, kind of it. Demon, you can't explain his faults? Right. Well, with weakness, he's not the most experienced at fighting. He's been taught to be a hero, and that's it. He has had a few fights, though. He's also a bit short-tempered, but in the end, Hercules has shown he has the right to be up there with his family, as a god. Now you done, Demon? 
You can tell what's up, Krisha. A life without Meg, even an immortal life, would be empty. I... I wish to stay on Earth with her. I finally know where I belong. <laughs> In the city of Facets, there lived a homeless 12-year-old boy who sometimes is 14, but that's not important. William Joseph Bastion, a seemingly normal child, one day came across a green cloaked old man who gave him magical powers because of Greek gods and a magical rock. At this point, I don't even think it's that weird. Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, Mercury. With the power of these six gods, Billy was ordered to cry out a single word to give him the power. This Shazam. Wait, for real? Say it! Okay! Like... Shazam? And then he became Captain Marvel. But we can't keep that name, so now he's Shazam, everyone. Shazam is an incredibly powerful superhero. So powerful, in fact, that he goes from a 12-year-old prepubescent boy into a fully-fledged adult man. Complete with rippling over the top comic book muscles. And yeah, we have to explain this backstory this this simply because any actual specification gets changed every three days because DC just refuses to keep his backstory consistent. As Shazam, Billy is granted superhuman strength, speed, durability, intelligence, magical powers, stamina, and about every stock ability a keep superhero would have. With the wisdom of Solomon, he gains instant access to an immense library of knowledge. Wait, this power makes him smart? Perhaps we should organize a visit to this Rock of Eternity. I think it should do you some good. Lemons? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Even the wisdom of Solomon couldn't make something out of you. Or lines. Shazam has incredible mental ability, a vast knowledge of languages and science, incredible memory, an immense understanding of paranormal and mystical events and terminology, and the capacity to instantly decipher mathematics and coding. And you're saying this jovial boy is actually smarter than me? That's not saying much. In the strength of Hercules, he became strong as fuck, strong enough to very consistently rival Superman. He can throw Dr. Fate's helmet into space, punch someone so hard he made a black hole, and was fighting Lobo with so much power that they were creating sounds that traveled across space. Okay, to get back, this is weird. And as I said, he was consistently matched the powers of Superman, Black Adam, and Martian Manhunter. Superman being the same guy who tanked the explosion that took out multiple solar systems. For the stand-up of Alice, he never feels tired and never feels the need to sleep. It gives him the durability necessary to tank hits from Superman, the Void the Hound which just happens to be that multiple solar system busting weapon. It can even take on foes using Toon Force. It also gives him a magical healing factor so intense he can regenerate from being turned in inside out. Jesus! He can survive in space and is biologically immortal, meaning he can never die of old age. Well, his simple form can't at least, his actual form still can't. Power of Zeus gives him, well, exactly what you think. It gives him epic lightning powers capable of killing the likes of Superman. A feat that means almost nothing because Superman is speaks to magic. Well, it's still very powerful magic, and it does more than just give him lightning powers. It also grants him interdimensional travel, time travel, heightened senses, resistance to magic, and yes, just blasting things to heck and back. With the courage of Achilles, he is given immense mental fortitude, giving him super real power and resolve. In other words, it means he never gives up. The speed of Mercury makes him fast. Really fast. Fast enough to keep up with Dr. Fate, Flash, Power Girl, and Superman. He can transform between human and super form faster than gunfire and make a tornado. He is faster than gravity. Whatever that means. And like every comic character ever, massively faster than light. Because we all know light is one of the slowest things ever. With these abilities, he has achieved incredible things. Primarily, he has taken on Superman-level heroes and villains. He is able to know the abilities of an enemy he's never fought, match foes many years older than himself, and wield some of the most potent magic in the DC Universe. Of course, with all the abilities come some weaknesses, I guess. In theory, he's a young and in inexperienced. He's a bit of a naive dork and very immature. But... Whether or not that actually acts as a weakness for him depends almost solely on whoever's writing him at the time. 
Sometimes he's a super competent boss with the wisdom of Solomon. Other times he's just a kid with the powers of magic seeking. It's just about as inconsistent as, well, the rest of DC, honestly. But amongst all, of all the inconsistencies, one thing remains the same. Zam is one of the most powerful forces in the Justice League. Don't mess with this child or you'll find experience rather... Shocking. Oh, come on. That's just the same pun I used earlier. Yeah, but mine was better. How? Freddy, you were right. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Come home, Billy. Come home. Billy! Super villain! Super villain! Okay, the combatants are set. Let's settle this. Time for these two fictional characters to collide. Are you ready? Who will come out on top? Fight! Damn, that battle was just... Just... Yes! Woo! So that's for Hercules, though. Yeah, Hercules might have had real training, unlike Shazam, but that really didn't matter much when Shazam had the wisdom of Solomon giving him the knowledge of what he needed to do against Hercules. So Hercules' better training is a mute point. Good old Herc couldn't even damage the guy either. His best feat was throwing those titans in the air, which caused an entire solar system to form. It's highly impressive, yes, but nothing compared to what Shazam has done. 
Yeah, we're talking about the guy who can punch a person into a black hole. Yes, he was powered up for this feat, but even when only using a third of his power, the guy can match the might of, god dang it, Superman. Shazam, weakened and casual, can perform feats to outclass what Hurt can do at his very peak. So the strength difference really was pretty big. Also, Herc isn't gonna outpace the guy. Hercules is, at best, vaguely at superhuman speed. And even if you want to scale him to other gods, it's not gonna do much when Shazam has outpaced fucking Flash. The Flash! The guy who can casually run across the world in seconds! Does anything else really need to be said here, guys? Also, it's kind of funny when you think about this. Hercules is fighting the man who has the strength of Hercules. He's pretty much an uphill battle against himself, plus, like, five other gods. Only difference is that DC Hercules is 100 times stronger, so, yeah. Hercules was, a, was an inspiring hero and has shown great feats of strength, but he was, he was clearly outmatched by Suzanne's, well, to be honest, everything. Seems in this shocking turn of events, Hercules couldn't marvel in a victory. Yeah, what a shocker. Oh, shut up. The winner is Shazam! That kind of tickles. <laughs> You're dead. Next time on Fictional Characters Collide. Oh, my God.